Yeah, Ready? Man, came to Ukraine, like boom. How different? What, like, like, Borscht. Oh, yeah. Music, sex, food. I've never been shot. Music. Hip hop lovers, Lex and Vicky Rap Zone with Kika. That was religious studies. Once in a while, I like getting some Gucci, you know. Can you finish the sentence? Ukrainian hip hop is. Hmm. I'm from Cameroon, that's West Side Africa, so... Well, je parle bien le français. Salut! <laughs> and you're asking me if I want to move to Ukraine or I want to stay in Russia. Hell yeah, I want to go to Ukraine. What's up? I'm cool. Hey yo, ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to Hip Hop Lovers Podcast. Turn in. <laughs> Перед тим, як ми почнемо, скажу українською всім привіт. Це Лекс. Це Вікі. І ви дивитесь Лекс і Вікі Рабзон подкаст. І з нами в гостях Кіка. Супер. Before uh, we start, we want to um, just add, ask you like, to the question. Tell us who you are and what you do. Um, I'm, I think they know already, but I should introduce myself. Yes, I'm Kika and um, I'm a rapper. I really don't consider myself like a rapper, like, you know, I'm kind of an artist because I do a little bit of everything that involves in the music. So I, w- I wouldn't just say I'm a rapper, but at the main time, let them just get it like that. From Cameroon, living in Ukraine for over 10 years. So I, I love it. Uh, awesome. Well, well, a lot of people know about you and today we want to like get to know you even better. Uh, so yeah. the first part of our podcast is usually Hip Hop Lovers Quiz. So we're going to ask you short questions. Okay. So please, uh, the first thing that pops in your head, just that's the right answer. Okay. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do it. Big or Tupac? Pac. All right. right. Uh, favorite lesson at school? That was religious studies. Okay, okay, nice. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, first thing I think about? Music, sex, food, music. Okay. <laughs> A mixture. Um, what is your favorite 2020 album? Uh, my favorite 2020 album? Oh, that's kind of like, oh, to be honest, that is Nas. Nas? Like the um, Nas? God's Disease. That's 2020. 2020, yeah. Yeah, that's the last, yeah, the last, spicy, last one. Yeah. God's disease. Yeah, not um, King's disease. King's disease, yeah. Not God's, yeah. King's disease, yeah. Yeah. Uh, favorite clothing brand? Uh, I really don't... I, I'm not really into fashion and okay. all that, you know, but once in a while, I like getting some Gucci, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice, fancy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the last book that you read that really impressed you? Whoa, that has to be a long time ago. It, it was like how to get away with murder. Like, I don't know why I was reading it. I think my, my wife told me that it's an interesting book because she watched, she, she watched the movie and she advised me to, to check, check out a book. And I was like, okay, how to get away with a murder. I don't know. <laughs> uh, if you could work with any artist, dead or alive, who would it be? Dead or alive, um, it always it's always been an interesting for me to 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 work with someone like Two Chains. Okay. I like Two Chains because he's um, versatile. He's very versatile. He, he he goes into any. I mean, can you imagine? He did a, a feature with Eminem. Yeah. People think that Two Chains is not hot, but I like his style. I would also like to work with Gucci Mane. Okay. And I would like to do okay. some with like someone like Fifty Cent. Yeah. I like that. Who wouldn't want to do that? Yeah, you know. I heard you chat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's I, th- I, th- I said that you sound like 52. Uh, a lot of people get that. Like, <laughs> actually, he's my idol, but I, I, I've never been shot, you know. It's possible. So, <laughs> so I cannot get into that 50 cent vibe too much. I got to mix it with some something from Africa. So like... Well, that's know. that mentality. Get rich or die trying. Get yeah, trying. That's the mentality. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. yeah. Um, Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan. Oh, that was fast. Uh, Sadama or Indica? Indica. Okay. I, I like the <laughs> quickness of these responses. And uh, can you finish the sentence? Ukrainian hip hop is? Hmm. 
Ukrainian hip hop is in the stage of finding itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Thank you for these <laughs> answers. Really f- uh, insightful already. And now let's get to the main part uh, with the questions. So. Yes. Uh, that would be one for me. So tell us uh, where are you from and how did you decide to move to Lviv and to Ukraine? I'm from Cameroon. That's West Side Africa. We're very close to Nigeria, Gabon, Congo. Mm-hmm. We speak French and English. Although people think that Cameroon is only a French-speaking country because um, most of the regions in Cameroon speak French more than English. But we are bilingual. So... Ouais, je parle bien le français. Salut! <laughs> I actually like... Do, do you listen to uh, French rap? Like French-speaking rap? I yeah. like it a lot. I, I love French rap. I, I think their industry is really developed. They, really? The best in Europe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the biggest in Europe. Yeah. I mean, like, um, UK got something going on, yeah. but French was before, already, a long time ago, they established themselves already. Yeah. Okay. And UK is more of a crime feeling. And yeah. And French rap is just like, it's so powerful. So, so powerful, they got pop, they got R&B, they got, come yeah. on, like. Yeah. And just elaborate on this story, like how did, how, how did it happen? Like the journey from Cameroon, then you moved to Crimea, then you moved to Lviv, like just mm-hmm. a, a little bit of uh, overview on that maybe. Um, sure. To be honest with you guys, I, I, never, I never heard about Ukraine before coming to Ukraine. Mm-hmm. I was trying to go to Canada. Mm-hmm. My cousin lives in Canada and he, he got me an admission to study in a university in Canada. And I was late for the interview mm-hmm. with the Canadian consulate. I was five minutes late and I was rejected for the interview. They, they told me to come back one year after. So I couldn't wait one year. I wanted to go out. I wanted to do something. So I just decided that I'm, I'm going to try whatever opportunity comes up. And there was this guy, he's in China. He told me that you can try Ukraine. I was like, Ukraine? I don't even know where is that. So he said, you do your research and you, you can try Ukraine. It's, there are not a lot of people going over there. Studies is cheap over there. The lifestyle over there is not so expensive. You can do your studies and you can, like, you know, I was like, oh, I went to the internet, I did my research, and I was like, boom, I'm going to Ukraine. My mom was like, really? I said, yeah, I'm going. I did my visa, and I came to Ukraine. That's, that's really, like, inspiring how you took this decision, not to sit around, like, and waste time oh, and get, like, I don't know, drunk or, like, say, yeah. that, hey, I didn't go to Canada. Because a lot of people that I know, when they had this dream to go to America, for example, yeah. and they just, like, give up later because... That's the only place they wanted to. Oh, that's the thing. You know what's funny? Like when I get rejected from the Canadian embassy, they told me to come back a year later. I had a friend that got Canadian visa. He traveled. And when he got to Canada, he told me like, you know what? Don't come here. I was like, why? He said, bro, don't do it. You're going to come here. You're going to start from zero. I was like, why? He said, you got diplomas, you got degrees already. You, you, you completed university in Cameroon. When you go to Canada, when you come here, you're going to start at fresh mm. from scratch. That's, that's so true. And he was already like, he was like 35 years old. And back then I was like 22 years old. You know, he was like 35. He was like, uh, like a big brother to me. And he said, imagine he's 35 going to start from scratch. Mm. He's going to graduate when he's going to be like 48 <laughs> or 46 like yeah you know i was like wow i was that was amazing i came to ukraine i didn't have to start from scratch i just continue where i left off mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah awesome. they gave us this opportunity yeah and the others yeah how <clears throat> for how long do you make rap music and who was your inspiration at the early stage the first music that um pushed me to get into rapping was uh, a song from tupac um that was that was like get get your heads up, baby. Don't cry even when the ball is up. Get your heads up. No, mm-hmm. uh, I I heard it and I was amazed. Then I started doing research about real rap music. I'm not really a fan of old school music. Uh-uh. I like re- I like the new wave, the new school. But you gotta do your homework most of the time. So I I I, I had to go back to the old school and learn the things that were being done that people not doing these days. And that is how I put the two together. Mm-hmm. I'm 
I'm kind of a mumble rapper mix yeah, in the. Uh, I would say that I am mumble lyrical okay. rapper. Interesting. Yeah. I, I didn't see that that way neither, yeah. but I get the new school flavor from you. Yeah, that, that, that's sure. what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. People, I'm not people, really a People mix yet. this mumble thing because yeah, yeah. I was just about to say. Every, not everybody from new school is mumble, in my opinion. That's true. You know? Yeah, that's but true. New school, old school. And some people don't understand the definition of mumble. You know, like yeah. it's Definitely, very, yeah. it's very. Complex. But even Eminem doesn't understand that. I think he well, called MGK a mumble rapper, which is I don't, I'm not sure if MGK is a mumble. Well, MGK rapper. is a rocker already. <laughs> he's, he's not a mumble rapper. <laughs> but Eminem yeah. called him that, you know, yeah, because yeah. like he's from old school and he's, he's just a new the guy school. From they, they just it's, it, mumble rap is a vast. It's, it's it's very vast. You cannot just point out one because someone got one song that yeah. sounds like yeah. he's not pronouncing the words correctly. You know. Why I said that I put myself in that category is because um, being is, is very difficult to really to, to really try to prove to people that you want to be accepted yeah. and you want to seek for validation. That is something I don't try to do. I just do me. And I don't want people to say that, oh, you are a rapper. Yeah. I'm an artist. Yeah. You see me rapping today, next day you might see me doing some dance hall shit, some iron, like I'm an artist. I don't want to be put in a box. Yeah. Yeah. So I like that. Rap doesn't yeah. define you. It doesn't define me. Rap doesn't define me. Like, I agree with that. If you want to call me a mumble rapper, fine. You want to call me a lyricist, I appreciate it. You want to call me like, you know. I... So wait, back to the point. How I came from Cameroon to Crimea yeah, to yeah. Lviv. I think I, I lost it there. Because mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so, that's an interesting transition in yeah. this Ukrainian situation. But... It's very interesting. So when I when I came to Crimea, I landed in Simferopol, and um, that was in two thousand and two thousand and ten, okay. November November two thousand and ten, and I was surprised because the people were speaking Russian. You know, due to my research, yeah. I was expecting Ukrainian. Then um, I I was there like for three years. Yeah. I was studying um, economics and management. Then the revolution came mm -hmm. in 2014, where Crimea was annexed by the Russian separatists. So um, they asked me to go back to Cameroon. I had to choose. I had two choices. Either I move to Ukraine or I go back to Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Then I, when I go back to Cameroon, I take a visa, a Russian visa, then come back. I'm like, oh, why am I going to do that? Wow. Like, if I wanted to come to, if I wanted to go to Russia, I would take a Russian visa <laughs> when I was in Cameroon. I mean, like for real, yeah, you yeah. know. <laughs> but I, I took a Ukrainian visa because I wanted to, to come to Ukraine. That's nice. And you're asking me if I want to move to Ukraine or I want to stay in Russia. Hell yeah, I want to go to Ukraine. Well, that's what they did with people. Yeah. You know, so. It got yeah, let's not, yeah, we don't want to get political, yeah. but. Really, mad props for you to, you know. No, I don't regret it. I don't regret it. I don't regret it calling my album Black Bandera. I don't regret being hated by a lot of people who think that I'm trying to create a hype because mm -hmm. I'm a black guy rapping in Ukraine, thinking that if I name my album Black Bandera, it's going to give me a certain hype to be validated in the Ukrainian community. You can suck my dick. I don't care about that. <laughs> That's I don't give facts. a shit. You hear That's him? big facts. That's what you yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> you should have that attitude. Yeah. I, I don't. Really, I don't give a shit I about feel it. Like realness from your words. They um, they judge you without even understanding what you're rapping about. Yeah. yeah. People judge you without even understanding what the music is about. I know. I know a lot of them don't understand English. Yeah, that's Trust me, I got that thing. a lot. Yeah. We, we, we get the same feeling, you know? No. Because people in America or English native speakers, they listen and they're like, oh, okay. People in Ukraine that don't know English, they say, you have an accent. Hey, your English sucks. Hey, I don't understand what the hell is that. And it's just like perception. And what you're laughing about. So my question out of context, because uh, I just yeah. want to ask this. Sure. So. When you came to be an artist, like you felt that, hey, I want to be a creator, I want to do something, you know, when did it happen? Did it happen during your childhood or when you were in your teenage years? Like, when did that start? I was really into African music. When I was back home, I was listening to a lot of African music. Mm -hmm. I, I had the feeling that I would like to do music, but I was picturing myself doing Makosa, mm -hmm. Bikusi, 
like coupe de calais that's the type of music we have in africa i, I was more inspired doing that <laughs> yes different genders of music we got over there um so i wasn't really seeing myself like being a hip-hop artist or something like that it came to me when i was being um I was being judged frequently by the things I said. Mm -hmm. People took it wrongly when I was in school, mm -hmm. probably like in my, when I was like 14 years, 15 years old, my friend used to tell me that, why do you make such conclusions? Mm -hmm. And I understand that they were taking my opinions personally. So I thought like, hey, maybe I should just start writing my thoughts what I think about what I about the way I, my life I can live my life, the way people do things. Maybe I should put my opinions by writing them down, put it on a beat, mm -hmm. and that came probably I was like 19 years old. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, I really didn't start rapping for real. Like I was like 22 years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really started rapping like for 19. 2021, 20, yeah. I was just playing around, mm -hmm. a lot of freestyles, but nothing really. 22, 23, that's when shit got yeah. serious. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's nice. Nice story. Um, so, what are your current goals for music? And I want to be the, I want to be the biggest rapper in Europe, mm -hmm. not only in Ukraine. West Europe is my goal. Mm -hmm. The mixtape I'm dropping now, Full Bladder. Yeah, tell us a bit about that, and let's yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, yeah. That's yeah. why we're here. That's what we got. Yeah. Thank you, God. No November 20th. November 20th. Full bladder. You better check that out. Full bladder, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah full so bladder. So nice. So nice. We're going to do some reactions. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Thanks. And, Welcome. Uh, tell Thank us you. about that mixtape. What, what puts you in a position to make it? What's the story? Um, full bladder. I started recording Full Bladder in 2017. Mm -hmm. three yeah, years three years in the making. But I had a couple of songs that I had to redo. Mm -hmm. Then, as, as you know, we live in life. Every day you got new things happening. You got shit coming up. Yeah. And the name of the, the, the mixtape was not Full Bladder initially. The name was something different. I don't want to say that. Then after that, I realized that I have so much to tell. So much more than what I had, so I decided to put the name "full bladder," which means that the bladder is full, and you want to take a piece, but <laughs> it is not like the regular piece. It's just like the mind is full, and you want to spit bars. Yeah, nice oh. interpretation. Yeah, that's and that's. You, can't hold it you can you can't hold it anymore. You know, you just gotta yeah, spit it out. Yeah, so that's love, what it is. Love, yeah. Love. yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, um, um, yeah. The biggest cultural differences between Ukrainians and people from your country. Like top, top ones. I know there is a lot, but in your opinion, if you could like say top three. Top the food. Three. The food. Yeah, I, I love food. You know, I'm not a. I'm, I, I really, you know, everybody loves food, you know, I don't want to be like a hypocrite pretending that, oh, you know, I eat, I like to eat, you know, I wake up in the morning, I eat and I, but the thing is like the, the Ukrainian food is different from the African food and this is the first thing I, I realized when I came to Ukraine, like, boom. How different, what I mean, like, taste. Borscht. Oh, well, yeah, I know, the different, but the yeah. taste of African food. And, like, the taste. Is it like spicier yeah. or is it like African sweet? food is more spicy. Okay. Mm. You know, the Ukrainian food, light spice, not, not, not very spicy Ukrainian food. Then why do they eat everything with bread? Yeah. I, I don't understand. I don't, but like people do. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. We had a lot of repressions <laughs> back in the days. Uh, and it's in our DNA uh, to save food and to like get bread. Because bread was something was that, you know, in Soviet Union was taken away from Ukrainians. And I think this is the reason why it's in our... Oh, uh, I see. Uh, I see. Yeah, like I we're... See. With that feeling. With that feeling. Like, yeah, it's in our code, I believe. Yeah. Oh, other than food, I don't see a big difference between the women. You know, of course, Ukraine got beautiful women. No, nope, ain't gonna lie about that. But you know, when you when you get to the mentality, you mm -hmm. see like the women are all the same. Yeah. And to be honest, Ukrainian girls they got the 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 shape like black women, but in mm -hmm. on, on a white skin. <laughs> Honestly, you know, curvy, meaning curvy. Ukrainian girls are curvy. Man, you take 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 a walk to Poland, <laughs> Germany. 
United Kingdom, the white women over there don't look like that. Now, nah, Ukrainian women got the body like a black woman. Yeah. Nice. And there's not much difference in mentality. That's what you're saying. Yeah, the mentality is no more different. They like to cook. Uh, uh. Western European countries, women really don't like to cook that much. Ukrainian women like to cook. They feed you. They, they, they take care of you. Like, and they are hardworking. Oh, my God. Like, they really want to do something. I know not, not all of them the same, but most of them like to do something. That is something I took note of. I noticed that. And also one thing I noticed about the Ukrainian men is that they can love. Yeah. <laughs> you Ukrainian men knows how to love. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, for real, bro. Like, you know, back, I'm, <laughs> you know, love was something I wasn't really growing. I wasn't aiming for that. But yeah. like, I came over here and it had, I, I saw the difference in the culture and everything. I had to take note of these little things. Like, you really see how these guys really can go Mars, can go far away, can take can take the the thing to another level when it comes to loving their women. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you you're not gonna get that from yeah, a lot of cultures. Yeah. We grow up with it and we see it and we take it maybe for granted, but whenever you don't see it often and then you confront yeah. it, it's different. Yeah. Nice. Interesting observation. Never yeah. saw it that way. Oh man, I see that every day. Whew, that is something you have to look at it and you be like, damn, this is really going on. And you know, like we African we know we know how to love, but you know, we we're different. We're different, man. We're different. Like it's just a different shit happening over there. Like <laughs> yeah. Maybe you just met the nice Ukrainian guys. <laughs> that, that's why you're Oh like, maybe. There's a lot of yeah. Uh so uh, here on our podcast we talk about you as an artist, but we also want to get you know more about you as a human being, right? Yeah. And uh, like we just got out of October. October was a mental health awareness month. Mm -hmm. And Alex and I we uh, like we practice meditation, we practice different like you know, sorts of stress reliefs that help us to cope with the stress. Well, weed sometimes. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, I just wonder how do you cope with stress and anxiety? Uh, what are your types of meditation for you? And yeah, like that. To be honest with you, I never had a meditation before in my life. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not really the type that maybe I maybe I had it without even knowing. Yeah, that's the thing. That's it the thing. Have to be like. A voice that leads you. Mm -hmm. Making music is also it's, it's some meditation. Absolutely. So I, I would say that if, if that is the case, music is my meditation, is my therapy. Um, uh, I've been through a lot of stress. It haunts me to to this day. Some things that I've done in the past and some things that happened to me, and I always feel like I can't run away from it. You know, the demons always with me. So. How I fight the stress is with the music. Mm -hmm. I don't think smoking weed, doing drugs, drinking gonna help me. Yeah. No, it's it, it makes it worse. To be honest, when when my mom died, I had the the worst feeling in the world, and I thought maybe I'll I will go on this rampage of I will go in this mood of drinking and smoking, and I'm gonna help myself out. When I get high, the more I thought about the whole thing, the more. I was thinking about her when I was high. Mm -hmm. I, I even got paranoid. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I thought I was going crazy. Like, so I, I realized that when I'm sober, I can paint a better picture mm -hmm. of her in my, in my memories, deal like, with deal with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, secondly, I go to the gym. Okay. That helps me a lot. Yeah. What gym do you go to? I don't, I don't know. I don't want to... No, no, promotion. Uh, no promotion. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a lockdown season now. People get yeah. used to working out from home. Yeah, I work out. Yeah, I work out. I do CrossFit. Nice. Yeah, that's heavy. I did CrossFit once and I almost died. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because he was. Yeah, it's kind of like real, like tough. Yeah. Right? The meditation is studio, bro, for sure. Oh, really? Studio sessions. This is your meditation. Yeah, that's my meditation. Yeah. Just going in the studio different. Yeah. Just go deep in music. And this is That's meditation. it. That's my meditation. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And uh, about those losses, I know it's a really sensitive topic, but how? What helped you the most to deal with it and overcome uh, when close people disappear? Like that's something I think a lot of us deal with, and mm -hmm. I'm really curious to hear this. Um. The 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 like me on talking from my experience. 
um, how I deal with the losses is is like some people will take it wrong, you know. But I have to say this: you need to you need to make the people that you lost proud, wherever they are. If you sit around crying like a little bitch, thinking that they're going to be happy because you're crying, because you're missing them, you're lying to yourself. So how I deal with it is this. When I lost my dad, I lost my mom, I decided that I'm going to make it in this life. I will let the world know that these people didn't give birth to a no name. And when I make it, I will, I will let the world know who was my mom, what she did to me. Like, this is, this, is what, this is what makes me go hard. Like, I'm like, fuck it. You, you don't know what you did to me, God. You took my mom away from me, I will go hard. And I will let the world know who I am, who she is, who she was, what she did, and the people she helped in this life, what she did to change the you know, that's just the way I look at things. Man, yeah. I feel that. And I'm yeah. pretty sure you'll make it. With this type of motivation, you're, that's just you're it. on a different level. You have your own personal why. You're yeah. not chasing any cloud. No, no cloud or nothing like that. You nothing. This yeah. Vision, and it's really inspiring. Respect. I'm not even scared of anything. Like, the only thing, the only thing that can stop me if, I, if someone kills me, if someone kills me, that's what is going to stop me. And like even that can stop you if you make music. Music will that yeah that that won't stop that won't stop the music but the thing is like i have to i need to be alive to take it to the next level and i'm not scared of anything else nothing 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 i'm not scared of nothing the only thing i was scared in this life was losing my mom that was my biggest fear in this life i was working so hard i was trying to be successful i wanted to make my mom proud I wanted to make her believe that I can make it on my own without her helping me all the time. And then she gone. She's no more. And what do I have to lose in this world? What do I have to lose? I got nothing to lose. I'm just going to go hard. The only thing I was scared of losing is my mom and she's gone now. So fuck it. I'm taking all the chances, everything. Yeah. yeah. You're going hard, man. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, inspirational. We're vision. with you. We believe in you. Thank you. And... Uh, to step aside, uh, you know, a little bit on a high level. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. And um, what do you personally think about the Black Lives Matter movement and how it applies in Ukraine, like realities in the world, mm -hmm. Ukraine, maybe c comparison in Cameroon as well, because that's, you know, it's a big topic. And I'm pretty sure that like race and discrimination is a big part of yeah, Ukrainian daily life, not just for Afro-Americans, but for us as well, like we rap, you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of... We don't have diversity and yeah. inclusion in Ukraine so yeah. far, yeah. unfortunately. What's your mm -hmm. personal take on this? First of all, Black Lives Matter, it's a, it depends on from what point you're looking at it. From yours, like... You know, me, my personal opinion on the Black Lives Matter, it doesn't... Black Lives Matter, I think that it is not... It is, it is not mainly about black people <laughs> protesting exactly. for racism or something like that. Because there's racism everywhere. Even in Africa, there's racism. So black people that doesn't like white people mm -hmm. in Africa. So it's, <coughs> Black Lives Matter, it's more than racism. Black Lives Matter is discrimination mm -hmm. that the black people in the USA, mm -hmm. United States of America, going through daily from the from birth because i don't think that some some people say oh black people kill black people every day in america so what is wrong with if a policeman shoots a black man in the usa they, they do it to themselves every day you're wrong if you're looking at that you're wrong you're wrong that's not the point white people kill white people every day the biggest serial killer in the history of mankind is a white man that took like hundreds of lives so we're not going to go there. We just want to say like, hey, listen, the black people in America came a long way. They came a long way from the slave trade, slavery and all these things. They're finally getting some recognition in America. 
just just let them be. Okay, let them kill themselves. It's fine. But you know what? Give them some space. Let them be able to develop themselves without watching over their soldiers. Like, without <coughs> going through this daily discrimination of, like, because, like, you know, there's a lot I want to say about this topic, but I think that if I if I touch some, some, if I say some things, some people might get in their feelings. And I really don't give a fuck about that, you know, but I don't care about that. I, I just, I just feel like America is not a place I want to live in. Yeah, I, I don't want to live in America. I want to go to America like a tourist, but I don't want to live in America. Interesting. No. Most people, most Ukrainians would not say it. That's yeah, I don't want to live. If I wanted to live in America, I'll be in America right now. I had opportunities. My ex-girlfriend, she's living in America, in Michigan. Come on. She, yeah. she, she gave me opportunities before I got married mm. to my Ukrainian wife. She gave me millions of opportunities for me to move to America. Mm. She, she was ready to do everything for me. I, I rejected that because I don't want to live there. America is not a place for a black man. Ukraine is a better place for a black man than America. Wow. Yeah, that's my conclusion. You never see a, a, a cop in, in Ukraine pull a trigger on a black man. You will never see that. Yeah, I think they would like compliment you rather than, it, rather like, than that. Than, yeah. You know, I, I got I got friends in the, in the in the police department in Ukraine. They like like my music. You know, they like respect me. You know, they like treat me like like just a normal fellow. I know there's racism in Ukraine, but come on, man, the level of racism in America cannot be compared with the level of racism in Ukraine. It cannot be compared to remove your pistol and look at somebody and pull the trigger like five times, five times. What are you doing? Yeah, like, what's in your mind? What's in your yeah. mind? Yeah, that's that's nice. hatred. That's hatred, you know. But I always thought that Ukrainians are more racist. No, nah, bro. Ukrainians are ignorance. Ignorance is different from racism. Mm, okay. Primitivity is different from racism. Yeah, primitivity, that's the great word. It's different. They don't know. I met people that look at me, they was like surprised to see me. Mm. You know, like, they're like, they don't understand. Mm. They're like, why, why, why do you come from Africa? They're like, why didn't you go to America? Why didn't you go to London? Why didn't you go to Canada? Why you come to Ukraine? There's nothing here in Ukraine. They're asking me like that. There's nothing here in Ukraine. Why do you come here? You know, they are not racist. They are just confused. They, they want to understand, you know. Yeah, and from, from, you know, ignorance is bliss. That's yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, and besides, like you know, uh, most of the generation that like like our parents and older, they didn't go out of Ukraine much. They didn't yeah. go abroad, and this is their bubble. Like Ukraine is their bubble. They didn't see anything more than what they saw here. They yeah, didn't go a right. anywhere abroad. Like our generation, Definitely. we're more. We have different view on yeah. these things. So that's probably why it's like, and it it. I don't know. It's so how do you think this ignorance can be solved in Ukraine? Because I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of end bombs that you hear dropping in not Ukraine. Um, Maybe not a lot, most, but... Most of the people, not everybody, man. Come on, we got a lot of educated Ukrainians. Bro, what you talking about? There are Ukrainians that are top-notch. Top-notch when it comes to civilization and socialism. Mm. They are right up there. Right up there, you know. I met, a, I met Ukrainians that check you they would check you you know they, they, they checked me a couple of times you know and I'm not lacking I'm always on top of my game so I think the best solution to overcome primitivity and ignorance is time just give you some time and education, and education even without education with time people realize what they have in their hands opportunities that they have Ukraine is trying to go to West Europe Look at what is going on in the West Europe, okay? If you look at what is going over there, then you're going to understand that that is what is waiting for Ukraine. Yeah. That's what is waiting for Ukraine. So they need to accept those things before they get there. They need to accept those things. There's a lot of shit going on. I don't want to say that, you know, but there's a lot of things going on. So it, it, it comes with time. It takes time. Everything takes time. Just give you some time and everything will be fine. They will overcome it. 100%. They will overcome it. I don't want to be a hero. I don't want to go fighting, teaching people, trying to make people understand that 
fuck it. I got my own problems to handle. Yeah. I don't want to be there. Own. They got their own problems, you know, like. So uh, share with our audience, with our hip hop lovers, your tips for a happier life and, you know, uh, how not to be afraid to chase your dreams like you do. Because you, you feel, you oh, sound yeah. so <laughs> confident and you seem confident. Inspired. Yeah, yeah, very inspiring. And I just want our hip hop lovers to get something out for themselves and go there and just chase what they want to be in this life. So give us some advice. Wow, it's simple. <laughs> I would tell them the bitter truth. If you want to do something and you don't, you don't believe that you can do it and you never tried it, you just got to try. Most people stop doing things that they started doing it because they're not having results. Okay, that's a different, that's a different type of failure. When you stop, when you're already starting, you don't even know how far you, you, you went into that thing and you decided that, oh, you're going to quit. You're not going to win never in your life, no matter what you do. One thing I'm going to say is that I've been rapping for 15 years and I'm still not making money from music. That should tell you something. 15 years. I've been busting my ass on these microphones. I'm not making money from this music. If somebody tells you I'm making money, that's a lie. I do it because I love it. I invest in this music more money than I make from this music. That's called passion. So this is passion for me. So if, if you want to, if people, if you want to do something, ask yourself, what, what can you do that you will keep doing for the next 10 years, even if that thing is not paying you money? When you answer that question, then believe me, then you, you know what is meant for you in this life. Because if you only after the money, forget about the passion. If, if you want to do anything but because you want to make money, then go get a, a job, a businessman or something and make money. If money is what you're after, then just, just, just do something that's going to give you money and forget about loving something. Or Then you're going to find yourself in the next 20 years doing something that you don't love but you're making money. But if you want to go hard and do what you love, what you people going to realize that is authentic, you have to follow your passion. And follow your passion is not easy. You have to do it for a long time without getting paid. And that's what people are not ready to do. A lot of rappers these days, they want to jump on the rap game. They want to rap and get money the next week. Yeah, they want to get concerts the next month. Fuck you. <laughs> You're not going to get it, bro. It's, it doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen overnight. No, 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 no. This passionate script of yours, you still need to make money to like it, drink, eat. You have a son. Mm -hmm. So how do you maintain that in Ukraine? That's what it called double hustle. Double hustle. Yeah, <laughs> you got a double hustle, that thing. You know, so you, you got like a daily job or business. Um, I'm a hustler in the first place. I've done a lot of things that makes money, brings me money. I'd rather not talk about it. So I just like do what I need to do to get money on and put food on the table. But music is the ultimate goal because I know that when that check start coming from the music business, it's gonna be a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna be able to 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 to, to cover up everything that I've ever been doing before. Yeah. Really, yeah. really inspiring. Yeah, agree, yeah. agree. Thanks yeah. so much Thank you so for much. Thank you guys too. Very genuine, very touching. Like for me personally, yeah. it was super inspiring. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, Hip Hop Lovers, let us know if you have any questions to kick up. Are you excited about the mixtape dropping on the 20th of November? Remember? Full bladder. Full bladder. On all platforms. On all right. platforms. All platforms. Everywhere. And Everywhere. we will get some bars now. Acapella yeah. or it would be just your last message to the audience if you can say something. Um hey to people that um watching over here, like you you just gotta believe that Ukraine is not the last place of hip hop in the world. People acting like Ukrainian hip hop is not good or something like I I don't know where they got that kind of conclusions from. 
like I think it's nice because you know Nas hip hop is that if they yeah. if they make it there like it's just nice to vary things they they they're acting kind of shitty with you shitty with Ukrainian hip hop um the thing is you know that the 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 the, the Ukrainian rappers went through a transition they went to trans transition from Russian rap still going through it. yeah they're still going through this transition so like this is the whole thing give it some time just give the guy some time like you know people people asking me when i'm gonna make a music on ukrainian mm -hmm. like can you imagine me rapping on ukrainian somehow it might sound funny with my accent or stuff like that so yeah, i i yeah, yeah. know your why now we know your mission and it's yeah. not like you're not doing it for fame i'm not doing it obviously for, yeah. you want to get famous and put yeah. yourself in the platform to say your message but that's the thing that it's hard to you don't need to explain yourself but you need to explain I need to yourself. explain yourself at the same yeah, time yeah <laughs> all right cool thank you so much Pick up thank you guys too yeah so thank you so much for this you're welcome and, um, stay tuned for more stay tuned for the album and we are going to do some listen to some bars yeah yeah listen to some bars stay tuned Thank you so much. It Thank was, you guys was amazing. How did you like it? I liked it.